I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and today I'm looking at a range of vehicles that are pretty momentous for the Australian car landscape. And that's because today is the day that Holden launches its first all new Commodore since local manufacturing shut down in October 2017. It's now February 2018 and the Commodore is now a derivative of the Opel Insignia. It used to be built in Elizabeth, South Australia, not all that far from where I am now, but now the Commodore is sourced from all the way in Rüsselsheim in Germany. So what does that mean for a car that has really been a national icon for Australia? Well, to be completely honest, I'm a little bit too young to claim to have been brought up as part of a Commodore generation. So instead, what I'm really going to do is assess this car on its merits as a relatively affordable, semi-premium, European mid-size vehicle. If you're looking for somebody to complain that this isn't a rear-wheel drive V8 engine muscle car like the VF Commodore, you'll have to look for somebody else's video review. But for me, I'm more interested in what these two cars and the rest of the Commodore range are really like to drive. The one on my right is the hottest of the new Commodores. It's the VXR. It has a 235 kilowatt naturally aspirated V6. And on my left is a new body style for Commodore called the Tura. And that's a raised wagon that's gonna compete with cars like the Subaru Outback. So Holden are confident that not only are they gonna retain Commodore buyers, whether or not that's the case is up in the air. And also that they'll conquest people from the semi-premium mid-size market. So let's see how they've gone. Let's see what the new Commodore is like by jumping in to the Tura first. What we're sitting in here is the Commodore Tourer in top spec Calais V trim. Now the Tourer only comes as a Calais or a Calais V with the V6 all drive. So it's a fairly highly specified Commodore, but you can get the Commodore in lots of different permutations in liftback format. There's no more conventional sedan in a traditional station wagon format. And like this Tourer, which as I said, is a bit more like a Subaru Outback. Not a huge amount of ground clearance, but some nice cladding on the outside. And the reason I've chosen this to have a look at the interior is because I think that this is how the Commodore puts its absolute best foot forward. And I actually reckon the Tourer could be a surprising hit with Australian families. So what you get is an interior which is very familiar if you've driven or sat in one of Holden's Opel derived products. The dashboard layout is very similar to the Astra for example, and it's based around this large eight inch touchscreen, which now has support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto features that the VF Commodore didn't have. It also has integrated satellite navigation and it's only the lower models in the Commodore range that make do with a seven inch screen without nav. However, I think it is worthwhile upgrading to the eight inch version. There's also a Bose stereo in this car and material quality is generally good. You get a really nice stitched and perforated steering wheel in front of you. There's plenty of soft touch plastics around the place. It's just a little bit scratchy here on the driver's side where you rest your leg. The driving position is really low in this car, which I love. However, the pedals do protrude a little bit far, so I find that as a long-legged driver, it's perhaps not quite as comfortable as the VF model was. But it is practical in here. So there's a fairly deep central bin where you'll find a USB port, a large cup holder here, two more ahead of the shifter, and also relatively generous door bins in this car too. Plus, there's plenty of light in the Tourer thanks to a huge panoramic sunroof. It's really important for a family car to have back doors that open wide enough to make it easy to fit a child seat. And the Commodore isn't bad. However, it'd be nicer if they opened to a 90 degree angle like a lot of SUVs. But once you sit back here, what you realize is that the Commodore wagon and the Commodore Tourer are really large and really comfortable in the back seat. 
One of the reasons for that is that Holden actually insisted that the new German-built Commodore would have the same distance between where the person in the back and the person in the front is sitting. So it's actually just as roomy in terms of legroom back here as a VF Commodore. This car is a little bit narrower. However, it is easier to fit a third person because this car is not based around a rear wheel drive platform, it means that the hump in the floor is smaller than what there was in the old car. And headroom is no problem at all in the wagon and Tourer. I've got plenty as a six footer, despite this enormous panoramic sunroof. In the lift back, however, I don't have quite enough headroom. The actual bench back here is comfortable, supportive, and it's even heated in the upper spec Commodore models now, showing the European origins of the car. Material quality is still soft touch in the back, which is always nice to see. Plus you get some amenities like a flip down armrest with two large cup holders, rear air vents, and even two USB ports here in the back, which kids will love. Although the new Commodore lift back with its large hatchback is more practical than any Commodore sedan has ever been, those who are after a really big boot in this car will still wanna go for a wagon form, either this Tourer or the Sport Wagon. They both have a kick to open functionality on the rear tailgate. And once that opens up, it reveals a really big boot, 540 liters of space, which is competitive with the class. There's no load lip, so you can slide heavy bags right on in. And as you'd expect for a European sourced car, it is a clever boot. There are several shopping bag hooks. There's a light 12 volt socket, and it's really easy to fold down those back seats with one pull of this switch here, which is something I really like to see. Plus, you can even set the height of how high the boot goes if you live in a place with a very, very short roof. So all in all, the Tourer has a very practical boot. So now we're in the Commodore VXR, and it used to be that if you bought an SS, it was immediately clear behind the wheel that it was pretty different to a garden variety Commodore. That's not quite the same feeling as you get with the VXR. It's a much more subtle model inside than the old SS ever was. However, if you're eagle-eyed, you can spot a few differences. The steering wheel is even sportier than the one that you get in the Tourer, but the main difference are these absolutely awesome VXR front seats, which are just so comfortable and so supportive. And now for the first time ever in a Commodore, they even have adjustable side bolsters that you can bring in or out so anyone of any body size should really be able to get comfortable in this car. It also has manual leg extenders, like all of the Commodore range, which is something that means that I think the uh, ZB Commodore is more comfortable than the VF, which if you remember, had these really big lazy boy armchairs. So all in all, I reckon the move to ZB has been a positive influence in terms of interior comfort. So in the back of the lift back, the good news is that this is still a pretty roomy back seat, despite the fact Holden have openly conceded that they no longer think a Commodore needs to be big enough to carry three big Aussies all the way across this big country. I think that's a smart admission. No one does that anyway. So it's nice and roomy in terms of leg room and toe room, even with these aggressive VXR seats. The bad news is that for me as a six foot adult, my head does touch the roof if I sit up straight. So if you're gonna be carrying really tall people all the time, one of the wagons is a better bet. There's no more traditional Commodore sedan. Instead, the car we think of as the four-door Commodore is now a liftback, which means that the boot is now a really practical hatchback. Open it up and there's 490 liters of space on offer. That's a little bit less than the VF, but of course it doesn't tell the whole story. The fact that you have this enormous aperture to put things in means that this is the more practical car by far. There is less room than in the Tourer or the wagon, but you can still drop the back seats with one touch and you'll be able to fit plenty of stuff in this car, particularly with the back seats folded. So how does the new Commodore drive? Well, we can really divide the experience into what feels similar to the outgoing VF and what's all new. And it won't surprise you that almost everything dynamically about the new Commodore feels really different to the VF. That tends to happen when you switch from rear wheel drive, V8 bias to a front wheel drive or all wheel drive car that tops out at a V6. Naturally, this car feels very different to drive. However, that doesn't mean that everything has completely changed. And when Holden's engineers were making considerable alterations to the Opel Insignia in the way that the uh, new Holden Commodore rides and handles, they really targeted that VF feel. So they targeted a fairly lush ride quality, 
they targeted relatively nimble steering that doesn't require as much effort as you'd expect and those things have actually worked out and you can feel an echo of the way the VF rode and steered in this particular car. So the ride quality tends to be pretty good throughout the range. Every model apart from the VXR has fixed dampers, although Holden have three different suspension tunes on those fixed dampers. It's the Tourer models that ride the best, mostly thanks to their chunky tyres and smallish 18 inch wheels. In fact, the Tourer is downright plush. The rest of the models are certainly on the firm side, as you would expect when you're driving a European car. However, the way that the Australian Commodore differs from the German Insignia is in the way that the Commodore settles and doesn't rebound in an unsettling way when you hit big bumps that you tend to find on Australian back roads. And Holden very helpfully lined up an Insignia and a Commodore here at the Proving Ground in Lang Lang, Victoria. And the difference between the two in how they settle after a big mid-corner bump really is chalk and cheese. So the Holden engineers have actually had considerable input into how the Commodore drives for our conditions and that has been successful. However, what they haven't been able to change is the underlying firmness of the German-made Insignia. But that certainly aligns to my preference in how a mid-sized car should drive anyway. So really, in feel, the new Commodore is closer to something like a Volkswagen Passat or a Skoda Superb than the big old lazy boy kind of car that we had wearing the Commodore name before. In terms of what's under the bonnet, that's all new. So a four-cylinder Commodore, uh, ignominious past four-cylinder Commodores, but the four-cylinder these days is very good. So our base engine in the ZB Commodore is Germany's top engine. It's a two litre turbo four producing 191 kilowatts and a stout 350 Newton meters of torque. And it's a real charm of that engine, lots of torque to use all the time. However, enthusiasts will definitely be keen on the V6, which is a reworked version of the old 3.6 litre, used to be made in Fisherman's Bend here in Australia, no longer. But it produces 235 kilowatts and 381 Newton meters of torque. You do have to get into it in order to extract all the performance on offer, but it is quick. And around Winton Circuit here in Australia, it's actually quicker in most places than the VF with the V8 because that front axle is so much lighter and because it's coupled to an all-wheel drive system. So the V6 all-wheel drive uses GM's Twinster all-wheel drive setup. So there's no rear diff. Instead, there's two clutch packs, one on each rear wheel, and they can distribute 100% of the 50% of engine torque that could be sent to the rear axle very rapidly based on predictive and reactive algorithms. And that really does work. On the VXR, you can induce a little bit of oversteer because there are two relaxed uh, traction and stability control settings. However, it's not the easiest car to put the back out on simply because you can't get that much torque in raw numbers going to either of the rear wheels. What this is, is basically a really focused all wheel drive car with lots of grip, especially here in the VXR where it has Michelin Pilot Super Sport rubber, rarely gonna put a foot wrong. And in fact, all the Commodores are well tired. The main tire is the Continental Conti Sport Contact 5, a good tire with lots of grip. The VXR generates its fair share of road noise thanks to the really good, almost track-ready tire on this car. However, refinement is generally pretty lush throughout the Commodore range, especially on those Tourers. Once again, the Tourer is just the most comfortable and relaxing Commodore to drive. However, they're pretty fast because if you get a Tourer, you automatically get the V6 with all-wheel drive. In terms of the safety proposition, the Commodore is pretty strong. All cars get autonomous emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, and lane keep assist. It's the higher grades that have the benefit of uh, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. It would be good to see that whole package standard throughout the range, but given the Commodore starts in the low to mid 30s, it's pretty good that the base car features uh, what it does. So after an intense new Commodore experience over two days of road, dirt and proving ground circuit, what do I think of this new car? Well, I don't really accept Holden's line that the ZB Commodore is a clear relation to the Australian built versions that came before it. And I think that the new Commodore should be perfectly comfortable in being an adopted European cousin that has been honored with a famous local name because while the ZB is not rear drive and enormous, it is actually a pretty impressive car. The new Commodore is Holden's nod to what sophisticated non-SUV family motoring should look like in 2018. It's lighter, more efficient, packs much more technology and is ultimately more livable and more desirable for more people. The addition of a Subaru Outback rival in the Commodore Tourer is inspired. Both engines are powerful and the diesel should be very efficient. 
the Australian input into the engineering, which is bequeathed to the ZB with road manners that do bear some resemblance to the VF, has elevated the Holden Commodore far beyond the only middling dynamics of the Opel Insignia base car, which I also drove and therefore can comment directly on. As I said at the start, I don't personally have a bleeding heart for the outgoing Commodore. It was a great car, it was fun and unique in the world for its price and skill set, but it died because it was not relevant. Judged on its own merits and without pining for the old model, the new Commodore brings relevancy back to the badge while offering sophisticated, enjoyable, semi-premium motoring for not much cash. If you're considering an Outback, Passat, Superb or Mazda 6, you'd be crazy not to drive this car.